I'm back with more sad news on the woman front. My friend Rebecca's back, focusing on something that has been around since the beginning of time and something that is completely entrenched in our culture, music, movies, everything. Now, what I'm talking about is rape. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, rape. The essence is that something with more power, or presumably more power, asserts that power for sexual gratification over another living thing. The overall culture does tend to rape women, as in they take power from them and dominate over them using sexuality. Now, would I classify putting young girls out on the stage and making television shows about that, even though they're obviously sexualized, would I call that rape? I wouldn't, because I'm not an asshole. But some people might call that raping the child's innocence. Which just leads me to my point that language reflects culture, and we are a pretty vulgar culture, and I actually don't have an issue with that. One of my favorite artists of all time was the great George Carlin, and he absolutely loved language and was a very articulate and intelligent person, and he enjoyed potty language. And so I don't find anything wrong with that per se, but just the fact that media likes to use words to get at you and to make you buy things or make you have a reaction to things, and yet people are not allowed to use words as they see fit, or so much as put on the words. I Don't try to listen to those idiots that just flap their mouth all day, which is a little ironic considering that's what I'm doing at this very moment. However, I do so on my own channel. I'm not doing so on national news, which should be news. I'm not like a Rebecca Watson. I'm not traveling around, talking to colleges, spewing my, you know, unfounded bullshit Yet. However, I do have a few credentials, and I am a very observant person. I like to basically analyze culture as it's being thrown at me. I enjoy making fun of commercials, especially commercials targeted at women. Ah, which, if many of you can remember, Sarah Haskins had target women. And then I'm I'm sorry, I don't remember Erin, um, the modern lady's last name. Um, but those two ladies did a great series on um, ads, especially targeted towards the female population. And I've always wanted to do something in that vein. Now, I've been grabbed, I've been threatened, I've been a lot of things in my life. But those have been individuals that do that. And honestly, no no harm ever came to me. So it's an empty threat. And I believe that she's just doing what she always does, making a mountain out of molehill so that she can continue to perpetuate her bullshit. She doesn't have to actually focus on the issues if she's warding off her attackers, which they're not really... I just wish people wouldn't almost say things like that to her, even though I do find it a little humorous. I find it humorous that people get so bent out of shape out of this, you know, when there's just so much bullshit going on around the world right now. And especially in America. There's really huge problems right now. And the division between atheists and feminists and religious people, it all hinges on a lot of women's issues, I would say, human issues. I'm a humanist. I fight for human rights. I am for gender equality in certain ways. 
But I believe you can't overlook biology. You can't overlook history. You can't overlook the fact that sexuality has changed throughout time and has been suppressed, but it has also been more free in the past. We need to stop thinking that our time is the best just because it has the latest date. There were many cultures in the past that revered women that understood that it was the darkness and light, male, female, that things work together in nature to form harmony. And so what I'm looking for is some harmony. But I feel like people that speak out for truth are almost always attacked. Recently, um, Thunderfoot came under attack. Well, I mean, he's usually coming under attack from someone. But it's shocking that people that should be on the same side, people that essentially tried to hire him and use his popularity for, you know for their gain and their views, they couldn't handle a watchdog. They couldn't handle someone there that was saying, okay, let's hold us to a higher standard. Now, I don't know the specifics. I have watched exactly one video on this subject, but I do plan to do some research and to amend, you know, with more videos. I, it's a continued interest that clearly gets a lot of hits, which is not the only reason I do it. But considering I have a very small channel, when I see something, a, a talking video with pictures that's about a recent issue, and that is getting response long after that issue is passed, it tells me that there is interest out there and that I can have some discourse with you all, which I enjoy reading all the comments on that particular video. So anyway... There's been a few other instances lately that I can think of. Um, Daniel Tosh, which I don't, you know, I watch it. I live with dudes. But he recently um, came under fire for a rape joke in stand-up comedy, which was, I, I believe it was heckling. And I really haven't looked into that either. I, I really want to find the actual clip and see if, you know, what had gone down. But... The fact remains the same. We have free speech for a reason. And if you disagree with the ideas, the whole idea is that you can and that you can tell whoever you want and they're either going to believe you or they're not. But by just sitting there and hating on someone for it, it's not really solving anything. It doesn't make you look intelligent and it doesn't make me care about your point anymore. So, this is the introduction video to a new series that I'm starting, and it's just basically my ideas as a girl who grew up in the middle of the, the middle of the country, well, <laughs> and who can't talk half the time. But if you'll listen to me, then you'll be listening to a real person, a real person that has bias a real person who's been affected by media, a real person who's kind of telling you what I think about everything, sitting back here, probably will not meet these people. If I ever get the chance to, I would absolutely love to. But being broke, <laughs> working a minimum wage job in the middle of America, you just don't tend to feel like it's, that's going to happen. And... I decided that, you know what, screw that. I can talk to you all through the internet. I can do my own thing. I'm a freelance writer. I do photography as well. And you have to make it for yourself. You know, I'm not expecting someone to hand me anything. I do this because I actually like to do it. This is my day off. It's not even noon. I'm up talking to my computer, trying to keep my cats out of the room, so that they don't interrupt the take. And I love it. So if you're interested, please look for the second video in this series where I start to get a little meat on the bones of these arguments, do a little research. I just was really excited and wanted to give you an introduction to me. 
Well, I already told you, I work a minimum wage job making sandwiches. And I don't and have never considered myself to be a hardcore feminist. And I don't really know what that means even. I just like analyzing videos and cultural things. I am interested in these subjects because I do have boobs. Um, And I think the media really does target women because they've said it for years. And I am a big fan of like old documentaries that basically tell women, you know, to use these certain products and that basically to get to the family and the money through the woman. And these are very interesting and I will put some clips I'll be interjecting clips into these series, so you'll see what I'm talking about. I like to include proof where I can, which brings me to the third point. I really love to edit. I'm, you know, this is the perfect project for me, and I have a lot of useless interests. Um, I'm looking for a way to actually use my $40,000 education, and maybe a way to pay it back eventually. So, on a more serious note, some of the topics I cover and will be covering are important. I approach this project with a lot to learn, and I express only my opinion. This is only an introduction to the types of media and the types of things I'm going to cover. I'm feeling just, you know, like... I want to be a documentarian, and I love photography, I love writing, and I can put this all together, and people actually respond to it. You know, I see a lot of these up-and-coming YouTubers who maybe they're just talking, maybe they are analyzing films. Um, One that I just got into is actually Feminist Frequency. I'm not anti-feminist at all. I just really like people that bring facts with their opinions. I'm fine with opinions. I think that is what makes the world go around. We call it what we call it. But you do have to have some evidence in there. And I think, oh oh my goodness, forgive me, I do not remember her name. It's a unique name, I believe, um, from Feminist Frequency. I'll put that on the screen. And I, I think she's great. And she's doing another project very soon that I'm really excited about. It's a video game um, analysis. Maybe that's kind of where I got this idea that people are actually listening and that this is a topic that we are not done discussing. But let's discuss it like adults. That being said, I have a BA in English from the University of Northern Iowa and I wish to become a self-made filmmaker and writer. And so if you're interested or need anyone to perform writing, videography, photography, or editing, just let me know. I'm open to new projects and to suggestions for my work. And I do not intend to plagiarize. I apologize for any quality um, of the clips, audio. I am working with a Windows Media Maker, Movie Maker, and... If anyone can provide me with any better software or even suggesting freeware, I would be very grateful. I'm I'm trying to upgrade. I'm trying to get a new camera and get everything together now that I have a job. But I really want to thank you all for watching. I hope you had a wonderful 4th of July if you're American. And if you are abroad, I'm sorry for America. (laughs) Um, If you're interested in this, you might want to check out Too Much Media, or I believe I called the other video Popular Identities of Women in Culture, and Pop Culture, or some crap like that, because YouTube made me edit that first video because it contained copyrighted music. Maybe from now on I'll just have to like redub all the songs into my own horrible voice and then I can show you guys the unedited version of that video. This has been Blasted Goat. Bye!